It's Alt of Alt Gear, and today we are finally going to review the Tudor Black Bay GMT. Now, this is a watch I've actually owned since uh, September of 2019. It is a watch I took with me to Rome, Italy for my anniversary with my wife, using the GMT function as it was intended to track two time zones. First shown at Basel World 2018, at which time it definitely created quite a stir on the internet. It was shown concurrently with the updated Rolex GMT Master II and immediately people were looking to get comparisons of those two watches. Now, however, I did get this guy, the Tudor Black Bay GMT. So let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about this watch and overall it is a winner. So don't expect many negative comments about it. As of right now, it is the flagship of my collection. Here is a close-up shot of my Tudor Black Bay GMT. I don't think anyone is going to argue that this was definitely one of the more exciting sport, sports watch releases and back in 2018. It continues to be a hot seller today where availability is scarce and gray market prices are very high. Now the overall aesthetic is a continuation of the Black Bay 41 I reviewed in a previous video. If you haven't had a chance to check that video out, please take a second to do so because many of the design cues I referenced in that vid are also present on this particular watch. Now, let me be candid in saying that uh, GMT watches are actually my favorite kind of watch. For me, they invoke a certain emotional reaction. They are inherently inspirational watches with a touch of utility. Um, I think it's their ability to track multiple time zones uh, it, it definitely incites in me a sense of adventure where other watches simply tell you the time. The uh, GMT function allows you to, in, in some aspects, see into your future or your past or where you're headed or where you're coming from. Perhaps that's an overly romantic description of GMT watches, but it is my feeling and why I continue to be a big fan of GMT watches and why... I'll continue to purchase GMT watches in the near future, despite this being what I think will be my favorite GMT watch for a very long time. Now, um, my wife and I do travel fairly often. This watch did go with us to Rome, where I did use the two time zone function, but that's a function that can really be available in any type of watch these days, uh, uh, speaking specifically about smart watches or digital watches by the likes of Casio, um, those watches all have the ability to track two time zones. But what the GMT Master II does differently is it does it with a sense of traditionalism. And, you know, with the vintage faux rivets and the overall design of the case, it really is a throwback to an era that in some ways, in my view, was filled with a sense of adventure and discovery where we don't really get that anymore in the days of the internet and Google Maps. Um, some of that mystery has been taken away from us, but having this type of watch does instill in me that sense of feeling of that classic travel that we had in the, in the 60s and 50s and prior. So like the newer versions of the uh, Black Bay GMT, this watch does feature an in-house chronometer certified movement. It does have a jumping GMT hour function, which I will show you here shortly. The dive bezel that is prominently featured on the other watches in the Black Bay line has been replaced with a bi-directional. You can see that there. It is a bi-directional Pepsi two-tone aluminum bezel. Now, the purpose of the Pepsi function is so when you are traveling, you can discern between nighttime hours which is the darker color, and daytime hours, which is the red color. Now, in addition, uh, this watch does feature a 70-hour power reserve. So, provided you wear it for a long enough time, you will get the benefits of that, and you'll have a movement that will not die on you and can essentially last an entire weekend without needing to be wound or worn. The Black Bay GMT is a 41 millimeter case um, in diameter across, which makes it in line with the sizes of the other Black Bay watches with the exception of the Black Bay 58, which does come in at a smaller, more vintage inspired size. The height of the watch 
from the case back to the top of the slightly domed sapphire crystal is 15 mil millimeters. That may sound tall or slab sided in some people's opinion, but in my wearing it for the past couple of months, I find it to be a good sized watch for my height and frame and weight and wrist size. I don't think any element of it is oversized. I don't think any of it is, is undersized or oversized. I don't think it's slab sided. I think it slips under a cuff really well. Overall, I regard this as a very attractive watch. It is 50 millimeters from lug to lug, so it should fit a wide variety of wrist sizes on your typical average American male wrist. The steel bracelet does, as referenced earlier, feature faux rivets, which is certainly a fashionable element and a throwback tribute to vintage Rolex and Tudor watches from yesteryear. On my seven and one third wrist, it sits wonderfully with a touch of top heaviness that does go away quickly if the watch is properly adjusted. Now, in my case, I had to take out uh, two links um, to get the watch to fit, and it does right now uh, sit right in the middle of the micro adjustments of which you get three. Now, you'll notice I do get, I do place tape on my clasp, the reason being is I am deal, dealing often with aluminum laptops at work and at home. And what I have found through the years is aluminum laptops love to devour clasps on watches. I hate having deep gouges in my clasp due to laptops. And so I now protect my clasp with a couple of layers of tape, which are largely invisible when you're wearing the watch on the wrist. So, one thing that does help the fit on this watch is the wonderful articulation. You'll notice that the bracelet does stretch almost straight down. It doesn't span far beyond the boundaries of the case. It does go straight down. So as a result, it does hug the wrist really, really well uh, due to that manageable 50 millimeter lug to lug span. But the design of the bracelet really does contribute to a proper and comfortable all day wear fit. As referenced, three levels of micro adjustment. So you can dial in that bracelet to fit to accommodate any level of swelling or hot or cold you may encounter in your travels to wherever. So studying this watch is very much akin to Tudor's cousin, the Rolex GMT Master II. And I'll show you that here. If you unscrew the crown and you put it in the first position, that and just pop it out there you can rotate the hour hand forwards and backwards very easily this function also allows you to change the date if you go backwards changes forwards changes i know there's been some talk about some of the watches having issues with the date wheel getting stuck I will say I haven't encountered that issue at all. It's been perfectly reliable in my experience. I did buy this watch pre-owned, so I got it at a pretty fair price from David SW. Uh, give them a small plug. They were actually very accommodating in helping me get this watch. When you pull that out fully, you can adjust all the hands of the watch and dial in whatever time zone you need. Now for me, personally, what I like to do is Keep it easy and simple and crown through in there. When I want to set a second time zone, rather than manipulating the hands of the watch, I'll just rotate the bezel to the time it needs to be. And that way it's uh, very easy for me to not do any tweaking to the actual time of the watch in terms of the hands, but getting the desired function by just rotating the bezel to the appropriate location. Now, speaking of the Rolex GMT Master II, the two watches do share some DNA, but in many ways, they couldn't be more different. The, uh, the Tudor definitely has a more robust profile, uh, dare I say, a more masculine profile to the case with a silhouette that definitely suggests this is a tool watch, not a piece of jewelry. Uh, I think that's one of the things I don't appreciate about what Rolex has done in recent years is they've definitely moved away from some of their tool watch roots and gone towards 
more of a luxury jewelry piece. And I mean, let's be honest in saying that watches in some aspects have become jewelry for men. The utility of a watch is not as critical as it once was in the ages of uh, cell phone and smartwatches and digital clocks being everywhere. However, um, this is a throwback to the more traditional tool watch vibe of yesteryear. Not so much of the shiny, polished, all over the place watches we get today uh, from Rolex and many other luxury brands in that respect. They're not the only ones guilty of this, but I do like having an actual tool watch, which can take a little bit of a beating. And you'll actually appreciate the scars on this watch as a result of it being an actual tool watch. watch. Um, we tend to take beating up our jewelry a little bit more seriously than our tools. And this is a tool, not simply a piece of jewelry. Now there is no Cyclops, as you'll notice here, um, which I'm happy about. So you get that clean aesthetic for the dial from all angles. And the Tudor snowflake hands are prominent throughout. So you get aspects of that snowflake hand on the GMT hand, the second hand, and the hour hands. I'm going to say this is debatably the best luxury watch you can buy on the market currently. You'll be hard pressed to find a watch that gives you more value, more features, you know, just great aesthetic like this Tudor GMT. Uh, the only challenge I think you encounter with it is there's been a very high demand for this watch that continues to be strong to this day. Gray market values tend to be exaggerated uh, among many dealers. Scarcity among the ADs is incredibly high. Wait lists are still prominent. So as a result of that, if you do want this watch, it may take a little while to get if you would like to get it at retail. There is a good amount in the gray market, but I would not suggest paying over retail for this watch. I think you're actually doing an injustice and outstripping the value of the watch by paying an inflated premium over retail. Now with its unpretentious style and charm and excellent construction, um, this really is a proper tool watch. It, it's something that Rolex has abandoned. It's something I think many watch hobbyists and people who actually wear their watch to travel will appreciate. When I wore it to Rome, it did take quite a bit of a beating without showing any significant signs of wear or marring. It handled it really, really well, and I was happy about that. I didn't uh, want it to bring it back, and it was all destroyed from one trip, but not at all. And that's one of the reasons I have a lot of confidence in this watch, because I have taken it out there, I have put it through the paces, and I've encountered no issues in terms of uh, the physical strength of the watch. So if you should find yourself in the market for a Black Bay GMT, uh, make sure you have a little bit left over in the bank to actually take this watch and put it through the paces that was intended. This is a traveler's watch, an adventurer's watch, and I would encourage you to really use it as such. I really think taking a watch like this and just hiding it in a cubicle is a disservice to the watch. Overall, this watch is an absolute winner. It gets just about everything right you could want in a watch. I recommend it with the, the highest positive feedback after owning it a period of time. You're gonna love this watch. So this is Alt of Alta Gear. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.